You know, every year you have to upgrade your males, right? You know, basically have to get your male ball pythons. That's one more gene. Last year we actually bred a banana clown to a bunch of animals. Well, this is kind of the next evolution of that, and that's the banana leopard clown ball python, right? Obviously, if we mix this into spot nose, it gets really, really interesting. But uh, this guy will get bred to a bunch of really cool stuff. And I want to go through and just show you all the males that will be up for this next year, because definitely a big upgrade for us, uh, starting with this one. Another clown project that I am super excited about is this super pastel lesser leopard clown ball python male i mean look at how soft that animal is it's just a powerhouse male and again we've got a lot of clown stuff that's breeding this coming up here so it's going to be really cool to see what we produce i mean you know clowns are all the rage and that is just one gorgeous snake and then if you want to talk about a gorgeous snake holy moly this is actually a banana cinny lori ball python that lori and cinny and banana mixed together i mean that's as purple as you get guys when you start thinking about barney ball pythons you can't tell me that this isn't the key to barney ball pythons we're definitely going to be breeding this animal into a chocolate this year to add even another layer of that dark gene getting to that purple ball python but this thing is on fire and i'm so excited to be back into the sunset project this cinny sunset male is definitely large enough to breed this year i can breed them to some of my hat possible hat females whatever the case may be and hopefully produce some sunsets again it's a very special project to me you guys know that there's a lot of history there we produced the very first one and all that stuff so i'm excited to get this guy in with some females a couple years ago we bred a bongo animal into a clown animal with a whole bunch of other genes this happens to be a pastel ng lesser bongo hat for clown look at the head stamp on it that's that bongo gene that's really coming through as well as the enchi gene so again this could produce some crazy bongo clown stuff with enchis with lessers with pastel all this stuff it's going to be pretty cool but he's not the only one from that clutch that'll be breeding this year this happens to be a banana enchi bongo hat for clown ball python male as well that's going to be going in with some clown type of animals to hopefully produce some cool enchi bongo clowns as well and the banana gene on top of it. And then to take it one step further, we actually have a banana enchi lesser bongo het for clown. So this is just a crazy looking patterned animal. It's going to be really cool. Again, I'm going to love to breed this into some clown stuff this year and just see what we get. Then remember all those mystery ball pythons we produced a couple years ago? Well, yeah, they're up to size to breed. This one being the craziest one that I have from the clutch. There was like five males in the clutch. All five were really different. And then the sixth female was actually different as well. So I don't know. I got to start figuring this gene out. I don't even know what I'm going to breed them into. To, but this thing is an absolute ripper and this is one of its siblings right here that i just absolutely love i don't know it reminds me of a jaguar so if i can actually isolate this gene to produce more like this i might call him jaguar ball python just because that's what it reminds me of when i look at it so hopefully we can start kind of coming to an idea of what the heck this mystery gene is all about and then there's the barney ball python that didn't turn out purple obviously but genetically it's really cool again it's a banana it's a super chocolate it's a pinstripe like i said now we can mix this into other stuff like lori balls black-headed ball pythons, black pastel, cinnamon, stuff like that, and start really mixing in other dark genes, hopefully drawing out the purple. And there's no doubt that one of those dark morph animals I want to breed Barney ball pythons into is this guy here, which is a super mahogany ball python, or what they would call a suma ball python. Now this one actually happens to be het for pied, so we can take this to a pied ball python and get some more mahogany stuff. We actually have a mahogany het for pied, so we can actually produce the black and white ball pythons too, so definitely excited to get this guy into the breeding rotation. And even without the cinny, the banana lori ball python stuff is still super purple. I like the fact that it has all those black freckles on it. It's just a really cool animal. So again, this is just a two gene animal, a banana and a lori, but I definitely have a lot of plans for this one. And back to a clown animal that I'm excited about. This is actually a banana mojave enchi clown. And uh, again, it's a boy ready to breed. So we're going to have so many cool clown ball pythons just come up here. And this boy here, he's going to definitely be busy. Back to the lori ball python project. And there's nothing more exciting exciting to me than this male here, which is obviously a super lorry leopard ball python. You guys remember when we hatched him last year as well as this year, so hopefully this guy will get going. Now you gotta remember because he's a super lorry means everything we breed him to is gonna be lorry, and then of course the leopard is an incomplete dominant as well, so definitely gonna be some really cool combos with this boy. It's hard to really pick up the purple on this animal, but this is a banana lorry extreme pinstripe animal, so genetically it's got a lot of stuff going on, and I'm super excited about to see what I can do with this one. As you can see, we have a lot of new males up we have a few more that i didn't even show you probably about another 10 that are just you know in shed or they aren't quite as spectacular looking but have great genetics so this next year is going to be really fun not only to see these guys paired up but to see what we produce from them so hey we're just a few weeks away from starting to put males back in with females 
Gecko baby explosion today, oh huh? Oh my god, the rain yeah. must have like made everything pop out. We got like eight cave gecko babies. Eight cave geckos, what, two different species? Yep, so we got the wangling gensis here and then uh, hanonensis here. All right, let's see these little monkeys. They're gonna jump out on us? Uh, they might stay in there if we don't oh, poke at so them. so velvety. Yeah, you know? I know, love when they first catch. so hatch. beautiful, I tell you what. So definitely cave geckos, and you're putting cave geckos, more cave geckos next door too, right? Oh, yeah. So, so they're getting their new digs over in the new Caledonia room, obviously not new Caledonia. Caledonia, but hey, they're gonna be over there. They're gonna be good. So these guys look absolutely cool. amazing. So then you can see the difference. Those ones are a little bit more orange when they pass. Yep, and you see even like the diffused kind of head, you know, it's like a little bit diffused, got the orange on them. You can see, oh yeah, definitely way different coloration. So those are the two species. Got a couple more eggs to hatch over here. And then we have what, a little morning gecko? Yeah, I caught this little guy out of the adult cage today. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause they just, you know, they lay eggs, they're parthenogenic. So they just lay eggs all over the place and then they hatch all over the place. And oh, sometimes the the adults will eat the babies too when oh, they so first you gotta hatch. Be really so careful. like I just try and get them out as soon as possible. Oh my gosh, is that the cutest little gecko you've ever seen? <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that thing. Absolutely amazing. So uh yeah, lots of geckos today. It's always cute to see Mango do so well. Mike's been babying like crazy. Yeah. He's, one your, he's one of your pals or what? Yeah, definitely. He might not like me petting him, but we're getting there. He <laughs> does get there. But you can see Mango just comes up. What happens is, tell me what happens. You actually feed him up here? Yeah, so I basically, at first I was getting him to kind of hang out here, but then he's starting to get bigger, so he's like kind of falling over on right. himself. So I get him to chase me up, and so he goes all the way across his log. Uh, and then down onto the rock, so he sits right here flat. And then stations there and eats, and I mean, he is definitely chowing up the storm, so hopefully Mango will get a little bit more size to him. Definitely been growing the last month or so, there's no doubt about it, so, uh, I mean, these guys can get big, you know, they can get like four foot plus big, so again, he'll eventually go over into Salt's enclosure, and uh, when they, of course, get their upgrade, but uh, he's finally starting to turn in the corner a little bit. Mike saw babying him like crazy, which makes it really cool. He is a super, super cool animal. Down here in the colubrid room, and we're really getting close to brumation. Going to do what we call a revamp here in the next week or two, which is basically breaking down all of the enclosures, getting them all like bleached out, cleaned out, get them all fresh. Because again, you got to remember when animals are in brumation, their immune system can drop a lot. So we don't want anything to go wrong in brumation. There's a whole bunch of really cool animals. Look at this, by the way. This is actually our false water cobra. Look at the threat display on that animal right there. Now, this is a mildly venomous snake, but not really too bad to be honest with you. But I just love the fact that they have that cobra flattening out of the head these guys can get like literally six foot long this is actually a little female right here so she may not quite be ready to breed but we're kind of bringing her up for the future i am in love with this project right here guys these are actually tri-colored hog nose snakes that are from south america and they're finally up to size to breed this year we bred these years and years ago they'll literally have three four five clutches per year they're just a super cool animal and again we have a lot of new stuff up and obviously old stuff it was a really good production year this last year for us there's no doubt about that so this next year with a lot of new animals up we're gonna have even a better year so I'm excited about it but of course brumation happens before you can breed them right so we're still several months away before we're getting eggs from colubrids again this of course is another gray banded or what they call a Blair's phase gray banded king snake that is coming up to breed here this next year so uh, again a lot more of those up to size so hopefully we'll produce more gray bandits by the way we got this one right here which is an albino Arizona mountain king snake now, we actually bought the project out from a guy in Kansas, I don't know, probably close to 20 years ago. He produced the very first albino Arizona mountain king snakes. And basically what happened was he bought a male from a pet shop and then a female from another pet shop, bred them together, and out popped the albinos. And we were fortunate enough to buy the very first one. So we've been working with the albinos and the hypos forever. I mean, they're super cool animals. And uh, I just live glad that we have some more animals up to size because they're always in high demand. You know what also is in high demand is garbage. Garter snakes. Garter snakes have kind of made a resurgence lately over the last couple years. And this is what they would call a granite checkered garter snake. So it's a recessive mutation that is really granted out. And that's a nice sized female that will be really good. An animal like that would have live young and literally would have somewhere between, you know, 20 and 25 babies. We have a lot of garter snakes. I love them to death and I think that they're super cool. We also have the albino Hondurans. And this particular one I love to death, especially with Halloween coming up. It kind of reminds me of those Halloween candies, right? You know, it's just got a really interesting color. One of the more unique albino Hondurans that we've ever produced, 
be totally honest with you. So this is up to size next year. We have a whole bunch of other tangerine Hondurans and stuff like that. So next year's Honduran project should literally double or triple when it comes to potential production. And we have always refining our Texas rat snake colony. Of course, our scaleless Texas rat. This one wants to bite me. What you, whoa, whoa, slow down, monkey. What is your problem? Whoa, whoa. Tell you what, that thing is a crazy monkey, but look at how gorgeous it is. Speaking of Halloween, that's another Halloween snake right there. Oh my goodness. I'll put this one down before it bites me in the face. Oh my goodness, that thing is crazy. And by the way, I got a little smudge from the bite. That way you guys can see really good. But really, every year we refine the scaleless Texas rat snakes. And speaking of refining, we always refine our high white, black and white cow kings too. So we have some new high white, black and white cow kings that are gonna be up to breed this year. And some are like, you know, really high white. Some have a little bit more pattern to them, but we have a bunch of stuff like that. It's including some albino high white, black and white cow kings. So should do much better with that as well. Then take a look at this one right here. This is actually a scaleless corn snake, but this one is about as scale as you can get. I mean, it doesn't have even one little remnant scale on its body except for its ventral scale. So it looks so absolutely amazing. And that's what's really cool about the scaleless corn snakes and the scaleless rat snakes for that matter is they're just so polymorphic. I mean, you know, everyone looks different. Everyone has a little bit more scale, a little bit more color. I mean, they're just so cool. But listen, we even have like stuff like this, which is just a hypo het sun kiss corn snake. You know, a lot of different corn snakes. Corn snakes are so popular, so it's pretty cool. And one thing I'm really excited about is finally, this year, we may be able to do some black milk snakes, or what they call gaijai. These guys have finally gotten to the size where they're basically ready to breed. They will get bigger than this, there's no doubt about it, but at that size, they can actually breed. Excited about this one too, we actually raised up a bunch of snow Texas rat snakes that are het for leucistic, right? So not only are they aneurysmic, they're albino, but then they're het for leucistic. The leucistic, of course, will be solid white with pink eyes, just a cool snake. We raised up a bunch of those, so those will be up to size this next year as well. Take a look at this guys. This is actually another salmon snow corn. But the thing I liked about this one is that it has some green color in the back, which is kind of cool because usually they're just really pink. That's what we normally produce. But with that little bit of green color in it, makes it kind of interesting. I mean, you literally have a, a couple shades of pink and then green on the back. I mean, that is just such a wild snake. And this one will be ready to breed as well. And one of my favorite corn snakes, I've said this all along, are the hypo lavender corn snakes. Snakes. There's just something about those two mutations. Both are recessive mutations in corn snakes, the hypo and of course the lavender. And just put those together with that kind of lavender hue, lots of pink in them, absolutely stunning. And then of course we have the lavender snow cow kings as well. We already have a group of these that are big enough to breed, but we raised up a few more because you know they're so popular. I mean a purple cow king, come on now, that thing is amazing. Then of course we have these little monkeys here and they're kind of feisty to be honest with you. I've had these in the past where they were really chill, but this this particular one, or these pairs I've been raising up this year, for some reason are crazy. And go, whoa, like whoa, whoa, like I told you, these are rhino rat snakes. Absolutely amazing, got that cool appendage. Oh, whoa, whoo, whoo, okay, okay, buddy, back in your cage, whoo. Tell you what, that's a little pistol right there. And then of course we have the albino applegate gopher snakes. These guys probably aren't quite ready for brumation to be totally honest with you, but they are absolutely amazing. So probably next year we'll be able to breed these guys. And they're, whew, man, I tell you what, these guys are feisty little monkeys too. Watch out buddy, back in your enclosure. Okay, okay, whoo, tell you what. To give me a run for my money. And then of course we have the Terra Humera Mountain King Snakes, or what they call no black eye. And these guys are just another cool pyro Milana, much like the albino Arizona Mountain King Snakes I showed you earlier. The same species, just a different subspecies, of course from the Terra Humera Mountains. Just a really cool colubrid. And then we have the Scissors Crossings, which is a beautiful just striped black and white cow king. I mean, just look at that racing stripe on that animal. Love this. This is the first year that we've actually bred this, the actual locality scissors crossing which is pretty cool and then of course we have our pastel pink western hognose snakes we grew up a handful of these guys last year too so these will be ready to breed too so as you can see it's going to be a really fun year coming up and that's just a handful of the stuff that we're actually raising of course we have to revamp everything the old the new and everything like that get them all cleaned up and then this room drops down to 55 60 degrees for three months so i'm going to miss these little monkeys there's no doubt about it but uh definitely excited for next year's breeding season i was excited to see this animal hatch out that actually was in that clutch that we produced a few worlds first. This is actually a black 
pastel, it's a pinstripe, it's a lesser, and it's a cypress ball python, and holy cow, did it turn out cool. I mean, this thing is absolutely a ripper, love it. The cypress gene, the black pastel gene in there, absolutely make this thing crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, do me a favor, can you hit this playlist right over here, watch a video or two. You know what else I would really appreciate? Subscribe to this vlog channel. I appreciate you guys so much. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.